Walsh defence failing to cope with the corner from the left. Davis scrambling as the ball comes across, but he can't manage to reach the ball, and Jesic is there to thump the ball in from just a couple of yards out. But still, the courage of the Welsh shone through, and they almost score when Robbie James bursts clear and struck the bar with this fierce shot that Zvilar couldn't quite hold. He had rushed in the area, had claimed the ball had crossed the line, but as you can see here quite clearly from the replay, it bounced down just in front of it. Just seconds later, though, at a moment that Jerry Jones will treasure for a long time, his first international goal on his 48th appearance. A corner from Brian Flynn, and after efforts from first Rush and then Jeremy Charles, Jones finally scores, the ball going in off the goalkeeper and via a post too. 4-3, and soon the Welsh comeback was complete. A free kick, 10 minutes from the end, just outside the area, and Robbie James here curling the ball round the wall after Flynn had touched the ball back to him. A magnificent fight back then by Wales. They almost sneaked a win when James again hit the bar near the end. Yet again, a chance emerging from a corner from Flynn. And look how close James was to a dramatic winner. But manager Mike England was clearly delighted with the result, as he told our interviewer Hugh Johns. Oh, very jubilant. Uh, they're delighted because before the game, you know, any team that comes to Yugoslavia and goes away with a point must be very happy. Uh, in the last few seconds, we could have gone away with two. It was a remarkable game, I think, one of the most remarkable I've ever seen. Uh, the conditions, of course, were responsible for what was going on. And, uh, you know, you say, well, you scored four goals away from home, you should have won. We certainly should. But uh, we're quite happy with the point we're taking away. Yes, well done, Wales. And in that group, Wales now stay top. They've got a game in hand also on Norway and Yugoslavia. Their next game is at home to Bulgaria on April the 27th. 22 goals from those three internationals on midweek sports special tonight. That's quite a bonanza. Now let's pick up the rest of the night's sports news from Elton Wellsby. Yes, an amazing night for goals involving England, Scotland and Wales, but not for Northern Ireland. They failed to score in Albania, and altogether it was a pretty miserable goalless draw. Ireland really needing both points to keep in with any realistic chance of qualifying. Either Austria or West Germany will most likely go through. Well, away from the internationals, there was only one game tonight, an FA Cup second round replay. Bradford City 3, Mansfield 2. Bradford now meet Barnsley in the third round. Rugby League, the former Hull and Leeds international Dick Gemmell has been named as Great Britain's new team manager. It's a temporary appointment at this stage which could become permanent at the end of the season. And there are two candidates for the vacant coaching position, Oldham's Frank Myler and Castleford's Mal Riley. One Rugby League result tonight in the John Player Trophy's second round replay, Hull 8, Bradford Northern 20. Racing news, and there was a surprise defeat for the Hennessy winner Braegorn at Haydock today. He was beaten ten lengths by Little Owl, who's now joint favourite with Silver Buck for the 1983 Cheltenham Gold Cup. Little Owl will run next in the Boxing Day showpiece, the King George at Kempton, and that's a race you'll be able to see exclusively on ITV. Cricket. The England captain Bob Willis has blamed the shortage of young fast bowlers in this country as the reason behind the latest setback on the tour of Australia. England lost the third test by eight wickets this morning, a match dominated by Australia's trio of fast bowlers, Jeff Lawson, Rodney Hogg and Jeff Thompson. Well, let me tell you now about a couple of highly skilled events that you'll be able to see on ITV a little later this month and also early in the new year. It's gymnastics, and on December the 28th, there's a display by the Russians, who are widely regarded, of course, as the sport's leading exponents. Then on January the 3rd, Britain's most prestigious gymnastics tournament, the Coca-Cola International, featuring a very rare appearance by the Cuban Federation. And their team is headed by Sergio Suarez, the man who got that unique score of 10 in last year's World Championships in Moscow. Brian. Thanks, Elton. Well, now it's time for snooker and the Hofmeister Doubles Championships at Crystal Palace. Well, when we looked in briefly at the start of the program tonight, Dickie Davis promised us some interesting semi-final plays. Let's go across then and join Dickie. Well, it really has been one of those evenings, Brian, because we've had some marvellous entertainment with the start of a semi-final between the favourites, Steve Davis and Tony Mio, and that exciting partnership of Tony Knowles and Jimmy White. Now, the semi-finals have played over the best of 19 frames over three days, and they played their first six frames this evening. White and Knowles won the first frame, 86 to 31, and with the help of a break of 69 by Steve Davis in the second frame, the Londoners levelled it. So it's one frame each. We're going to join it for frame three, Tony Mio is at the table, and commentary is by Dennis Taylor and John Pullman. 
Tony Mayo breaks off in the third frame. One frame all at the moment. 19 frame match, this semi final of the Hofmeister World Doubles Championship. And Tony Nell's in a little bit of bother here. It was a pretty good break from Tony Nell's. see the result, little snick snick and left Steve Davis with a chance of a red into the corner pocket but the colours are not too nicely situated not too easy to get on the back, I think it will go into the same pocket that the red will disappear into but not at all easy to get onto it I decided to go down for the blue one Six. It'd be interesting to see if Steve attempts to get onto the black here with a little cannon on the red. Seven. And that's exactly what he managed. Very clever little billiard type shot there. Fourteen. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Well, looks he, he might have a slight angle on the black here. Not quite the angle he wanted. Would, would have liked to have gone into the bunch of reds. Thirty-one. Well, Steve Davis now looks to have settled into a nice rhythm. Seems to be queuing very smoothly. Still probably the finest cue action in the world, this young man. Although he's had a bit of a lean spell in the last nine months. People are saying what's happened to Steve Davis, but I can assure you he'll be winning quite a number 34. of tournaments in the next season. Well, that looks as if he has the angle this time. Somehow has to dislodge a few of those reds. Forty-two. 
It's amazing, Dennis, how you get uh, periods of time when you continually go into the pack of reds and nothing comes to your advantage. You know, that's the, the second or third time that Steve 42, has played that particular Steve type Dave. of shot and, and not got a red on. Sometimes it comes right, sometimes it doesn't. That takes them into a 42-point lead. Jimmy White shaping up there to bring the cue ball back to the top cushion. Yes, he decided that's the shot he's going to play. Oh, that was a little bit fortuitous. I don't think Jimmy really anticipated putting that red, but then it went, and he's reasonably on the black here. This could have been a, a very nice little float to get. Red's now nicely split up. Eight. Nine. And this young man only needs half a chance to knock a few balls in. Sixteen. Seventeen. Andy also keeps the referee on his toes, that's for sure. Twenty-four. Doesn't mess around. Known as Whirlwind White. Twenty-five. Now just ten points behind, and the reds Perfect are still turn. nicely placed. Thirty-three. Yes, this young man that is not as quick around the table as Alex Hurricane Higgins, but certainly I would suggest 36. quicker on the shot than Alex. One sight and bump as a rule. 37. Well, I find that one a little difficult to get at as a left hander. 38. Then it goes no, no, it, no, yes, it did. Just wriggle in. 44. So it takes White and Knowles into a two point lead. 45. And more to come. <clears throat> 49. Well, just about six inches further than he wanted it. Just the safety shot to play here, I should feel. Forty nine, Jimmy White. Davis and Mio, forty two, White and Knowles, forty nine. Now, let's see if Tony Knowles can pop in a long red here. Normally would have knocked that in, but he's playing in a doubles match, so a little bit more difficult to get into a rhythm. Yeah, I think a good point to mention here, Dennis, that of course players are sitting out a little longer in, the, in a doubles match than they would be for pairs. So it's very easy to get cold. You go to the table a couple of times with nothing much on, you know, you're frozen out of the game for quite a long period sometimes. Foul. And of Four. course, always Thanks the thought that 
one doesn't want to let one's partner down, so a little bit of added pressure for the boys, yeah? <laughs> Chance here for Tony Nails. Three points in front at the moment. 49 points to 46. And the penultimate red over the pocket. Oh, that's not too good. One. Might be able to disturb the last red when he puts this black. Well, he's content to hold it. But certainly not an easy pot, this. He might well be advised to play the snooker Eight. here. Send the red down the table, leave the cue ball behind the black. Now, had to go at the pot, and in it went. Nine. That was an extremely good pot. Certainly wasn't an easy one. Puts them 19 points in front now with just the colours on the table. 27 points. That was a perfectly judged snooker from Steve Davis. Twice across and just onto the yellow. Well, Foul for Davis and Mayo. Not only has he Davis and Mayo not negotiated 50, the snooker, knows 65. but could find the, themselves in a little bit of bother after this next shot. If, Tony Mayo can stop that cue ball somewhere around the position of the yellow and get the yellow up into the bulk area. May just be a little bit strong with that one. can hit the yellow, it's not a snooker, but not a nice shot to have to play. Not easy to get this one safe. And only 15 points in the frame. It's still anybody's game, this. Well, we're quite happy with that. That looks pretty safe. It's not quite as intended. Requires a reasonably thin contact. Uh, where's that cue ball going? Two. Five. And this is the Vital ball coming up, just checks the scoreboard. He wants this Brown to leave this frame safe. 
Nine. And that puts them 24 points in front, just 18 left on the table. Nine, Jimmy White. Davis and Mio, 50. White and Knowles, 74. So Davis and Mio requiring two snookers at the moment. Assuming, of course, that the penalty for the first one is a mere five. A uh, pretty daunting task. Well, that looks pretty good. But not too difficult. Bolt cushion onto the blow. Shouldn't be too difficult for Tony Nose to negotiate. But having said that, would you believe it? Foul. And has given, and this is most important, seven. has given seven points Davis away. Which means that Steve Davis, should he be able to pot the three balls here, can win this round. There's 17 points in the game now, with 18 on the table. Well, he's certainly got a chance here. And that's it. There's 11. no way that he's going to miss this black to win this frame by just one point to go into a two frames to one lead. And there it goes. Davis well, that was one that they pinched back. But Steve Davis and Tony Mill lead by two friends to one. So the closest of finishes, and with Steve Davis and Tony Mio now leading, we're going to join the fourth frame. They're out in front, 27 points to nothing, and last year's world champion is at the table. Well, there is a possible long red into the corner pocket. That looks pretty good. One. And that was a very clever long red from Steve Davis. He left the white in such a position. Eight. The red he played was the only possible one he could leave. As it is, he's right in the driving seat. Nine. From the sound of the wind whistling through the rafters here at Crystal Palace, one wonders if that fellow Higgins is looking in at this match. Sixteen. Great opportunity here for Steve. Seventeen. A few months ago, you'd have bet odds that he'd have knock most of these in that last few months not quite putting it together as he was in 1981 when he won just about everything that happened and obviously nobody could continue 24. to do that and as I was talking there I played a little bit of a loose shot I would have thought hasn't got himself into the position that he desired Once again, a long red into the bolt corner pocket. A little screw shot to get onto the black. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter whether you get on them or not, if you can pop like that. There's still problems here. Oops. 25. One that went astray. Well, that takes Steve Davis and Tony Mayo into a 52-point lead. And there's still a lot of points left on the table yet. One. 
And this is when Jimmy White is at his most dangerous. Time and time again, from this position, I have seen him clear the clear all the balls off the table. And that certainly helped the situation. Six. Seven. Well, virtually, Dennis, there isn't a ball on the table now that isn't potable. So if this young man minds his work, he should clear up here. Fourteen. Fifteen. Thirty. A little bit short on that one. Had to go down for the blue. Thirty-one. And just one more red on the table after this blue. Thirty-six. Thirty-seven. And this, I suppose, would be recompense for having lost the last frame when Steve Davis and Tony Mayer needed two snookers on the blue, and Tony Nell's obliged by giving seven points away. 44. <laughs> 47. Well, he's a little bit short, but Jimmy White, one of the best players in the game with the rest. 51. 56. Well, just needs the pink to clinch this fourth frame. 62. And what a match I think we're in for here, Dennis. That levels it up. Two frames all. 69 and frame Jimmy White. Yes, level, and how prophetic that comment by Dennis Taylor about the Jimmy White finishes. Frame five went to Davis and Mio, uh, 61 points to 21, so they were back out in front again, three frames to two. And in the last frame of the evening, White and Knowles went out to a lead 48 to 31. We're going to join it with Steve Davis playing, and he scored 11. Eleven. Well, that was a Steve good try, Davis. but it didn't go. Well, two White reds left. Davis and Mio, and 31. 17 points in the front. Tony White, uh, Jimmy White and Tony Knowles, 17 points in front at the moment. And one good pot here from Jimmy could just about clinch this frame. Make the best of that. I think this one will pot. Five, Jimmy White. <coughs> so now twenty two points in the frame. Just the last red possible, 35 points on the table. Oh, what a cracking pot that. Oh, worth a guinea box there. One. And nicely on the pink. 
Shouldn't be too difficult to get on the yellow. And Tony could well clean up and win the frame, yeah? What a tremendous last red that was, Seven. Dennis. Yes, I would say that deserves to win any frame, John. Nine. And unfortunately for Tony Knowles and Jimmy White, all the colors out in the open. Twelve. Sixteen. And that's the perfect angle to take the cue ball up for the pink. Twenty-one. And the score tells you he's still Needs both colours. Tony just checking. Twenty-seven. Well, he's a little bit confused at the moment, but he's got to knock this one in. There it goes, but still a long way to go in this match. I'm sure we're in for a tremendous battle when this match is resumed. Steve Davis and Tony Mayo go into a four frames to two lead. So the favourites having the better of the opening session, leading by four frames to two, and they continue the semi-final tomorrow afternoon. Our programme starts at 2.45. I hope that you can join us for that. In the evening, we have the other semi-final, which is between Alex Higgins and Eddie Charlton and uh, Terry Griffiths and Doug Mountjoy, who also lead by four frames to two. That's tomorrow night. See you next, though, at 2.45 tomorrow afternoon. Until then, from all of us here, good night. Thanks, Dickie. Well, what a night it's been on Midweek Sports Special. And finally, the closing headlines. Goals all the way. England get nine against Luxembourg. Scotland lose 2-3 in Belgium. And Wales grab a 4-4 draw in Yugoslavia. But the headline maker tonight is Luther Blissett. A hat-trick in his first full game for England. He's had the last word tonight. Good night to you all. Tonight was sort of a combination of really all the hard work and effort I've had to put in together. And uh, now that I've, well, now that I've been there and I've played at Wembley, you know, it's, I think it's a pinnacle of, you know, everything I've worked for. I'm very, very pleased about it. For Robson, and for Woodcock, and Blissett surely this time, well, he's miskicked it in. Woodcock is onside this time, the angle widening by the second as the ball ran away from him, but Blissett puts it in. Woodcock sensing possibilities again. This it's in the middle, it's the hat-trick! Stay with us on Thames for Love Thy Neighbour.